Hi, it's Kim from Chatterbox Quilts, and today I wanted to share with you one of my recent vintage sewing machine purchases. I got this machine at a, well, not an estate sale actually, but I got it through Kijiji, but the gentleman I purchased it from had, I don't know, 40 sewing machines, and he had got them at an estate sale. I don't know how I missed out on that, but some of them were in pretty poor condition, and you can see this one isn't in great condition either, but it is pretty old. I would say it says late 1890s or early 1900s, so you can't expect it to be pristine. But there were a few things that really caught my eye about this machine. First off, it's a hand crank. I don't have a hand crank machine, so I was intrigued by that. And you can see what great condition the ceramic knob is on this machine, which really surprised me. I would have thought that it would have been cracked or broken. Perhaps it's a replacement. It doesn't appear to be. Anyway, it's in great shape. The other thing that's interesting about this machine is some of the details on it. You can still see some of the decals on it, although they're not gleaming in bright gold, but there are mother of pearl inlays in it, and I thought those were very pretty, and they've come up more. I'll continue to work on them, but you can see the beautiful details, the little petal details on it. It was hard for me to figure out what this machine was because of the wearing on the decals, but finally I figured out it's a Frister and Rossmann machine, and they were made in Germany, so that's what it is. Let me show you a little bit more of the machine. You can see the front here, and it's got three little knobs here. This one goes up and down when the needle goes up and down. One is for tension. I think one might be for foot pressure. I'm not sure exactly. I have to do more research into this machine for sure. Here's the back of it. That gives you a better look at the uh, ceramic knob there and the hand crank mechanism. Interestingly enough, on this machine, you usually have a screw inside the hand wheel that you would loosen when you're winding the bobbin so the needle doesn't go up and down. On this particular machine, it's got this little device here that goes back and that will stop the needle from going up and down That locks back into the hand wheel. So that's kind of interesting. And you can see the bobbin winding mechanism. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. The problem with this machine for me is that it didn't obviously come with a manual and I can't seem to find one online but I'm a good detective so I'm going to keep looking and I'm going to see if I can get this little machine working. In the meantime it's got lots of cleaning that needs to be done on it and I'm going to do that and see what shape I can get it into. It's going to be an interesting display piece if nothing else in my studio.